a genuine, I think, about that wish, he thinks, and he's not the only one, there are, there are many others, and it's, it's an argument to be taken seriously, that what is needed is that we have to come up with a canon, with a national canon, with, which in some ways reaches back to shared myths, to, to a shared narrative um, about uh, our nation, which uh, um, even immigrants, the children of immigrants, immigrants can identify with. Um, it sounds good, I'm not so convinced that this is a fruitful endeavor either, because I don't quite know what those myths would be. I don't have anything against teaching uh, the history of the 80 years war in Spain uh, in the history curriculum of Dutch schools, but I think as a myth to uh, try and instill this in the children and grandchildren of people from villages in Anatolia um, is somewhat impractical, uh, to say, uh, say the least. Then there are those who are now suddenly reaching for this uh, popular new phrase, Judeo-Christian uh, civilization, as though the Jews and the Christians have always been great brothers in arms as they built this great Western civilization we live in. Um, this is a somewhat modern invention, uh, even though, of course, uh, there are many common roots. But I think it's used, uh, again, rather fort de mieux, by people who um, are wary of simply uh, defining Western civilization as Christendom, uh, which the Pope can still try to do, but is no longer an entirely convincing uh, argument to most uh, Europeans um, who have become too secular for that. It's, 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 um, I think we've, we've, we're beyond that particular uh, station, and I don't think that we can um, realistically turn the clock back. Now, if um, religion or shared myths, shared religious values, shared myths do not work, then how do we define ourselves nationally and in terms of uh, the West? Now, this is why, where I think that the, the term uh, or the concept of the Enlightenment has suddenly um, uh, come into play. The Enlightenment was not something that was, some, was of course, something that, that scholars and historians and some have talked about a lot in the past. It's not something that newspaper columnists uh, radio commentators uh, and politicians, especially not populist politicians, would uh, that would uh, quickly pass uh, their lips. It, it was it was uh, 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 had become an academic subject. It is no longer. And my view on that is that the Enlightenment has, has already become a convenient badge used by people who want to define Western civilization in opposition to Islam, in particular. Uh, people who are afraid of Islamization, as they call it, or uh, Europe becoming Eurabia, need uh, some kind of common definition for this Western civilization, which is supposedly under threat. And since Christendom doesn't really work anymore outside the Vatican, and since the common myths um, are faded, um, the Enlightenment has suddenly become a convenient badge uh, of identity. Now, what is not so clear is what people mean by the Enlightenment when they talk about it. Uh, they mean very different things, and indeed the Enlightenment itself meant very different things. It was a, a, a period in history with um, a, a number of thinkers who disagreed on many uh, things, some of whom were religious, others uh, were not, um, but who by and large believed that, uh, that the human uh, inquiry should be based on reason and not on revealed truth. Truth. Um, they also reached out to other civilizations, the idea, which makes the idea that the Enlightenment is a kind of flag of Western identity which has to be defended against alien creeds rather absurd, a historical, since one of the, one of the real fruits of the Enlightenment indeed was the importance and stress on the importance of translation of reaching out to other civilizations, learning about other cultures and so on, which again is, not, is linked, of course, to the colonial enterprise as well, which has, uh, as we know, its, its darker pages. But the Enlightenment has become this great catchphrase. And by Enlightenment, people do mean that there are certain things you can isolate. People do mean things like the separation of church and state, um, the uh, equality of sexes, uh, and, and this is not something that would have occurred to most thinkers of the 18th century, but the recognition of gay rights, for example. 
which is why um, even somebody like Sheriff Wilder, um, whose own followers uh, perhaps not defined by their huge enthusiasm for gay rights, I mean, they may not be against it, but I don't think this is what really mobilizes these people, that uh, Sheriff Wilder can be found uh, giving a speech in Jerusalem to an anti-jihad conference, and one can more or less imagine the kind of people who turn up to a conference like that in Jerusalem, where Geert Wilders to his audience in Jerusalem would say, um, Amsterdam has uh, gained the reputation of being the gay capital of the world, and now with these Muslims, they're about to destroy this. I wonder what his audience in Jerusalem made of this tremendous threat to our um, uh, culture, but uh, he said it, and what it means, of course, is that uh, we have passed religion, Christian, Christendom, and so on. And so now the defense of Western civilization has to include essentially politically correct attitudes that only emerge from the 1960s. And, and when I say politically correct, I'm not saying that they're necessarily wrong. Uh, I, I, I myself would heartily uh, endorse uh, gay rights and equality of sexes and so on. But the, to, to the idea that this somehow is the essence of our uh, civilization seems somewhat uh, far-fetched. Now, if none of these things work, if shared myths don't work, if shared religious values don't really work, if the Enlightenment doesn't quite cover it, we're perhaps left with the bare bones of what might keep uh, democracy together. And that would be the rule of law. And um, the man, the scholar, uh, that I, whom I admire perhaps more than anyone on uh, Islam in the world today, but especially Islam in the West, Olivier Roy, uh, has indeed come to that conclusion that uh, shared values is not something you can demand. Um, what you can demand is a shared uh, allegiance to the law, that, you, that people um, uh, play by the same rules, in other words, the rules of democracy, but also the, the, the rule of law. And that as long as people abide by those rules, um, it doesn't matter that we don't all share the same values or the same culture or um, the same myths uh, and so on. Now, I'm inclined to go a long way uh, with Olivier Roy on this, although I'm not quite sure whether the last word has been said by that, by stating that, because it may be still problematic if you have um, populations of people, people whose values can clash um, uh, severely, sometimes violently. Um, in some ways, of course, it doesn't matter. In some cases, it doesn't matter. When you have people who feel that their values are so out of tune with the rest of society that they, can, they cannot take part in it. I would use, uh, as an example, uh, the Mennonites, or the Amish in the United States, have their own communities. My grandfather, the one who was born uh, in, in uh, um, not I'm proud to say, Hollywood, or Fisher, um, uh, he was a Mennonite, and Dobbs was in the uh, minister. And it was often rather embarrassing when the Mennonites from the United States, the brethren, would come and visit him in Nijmegen with their long beards and black suits to find that they had very little in common with uh, Dobbs and um, brothers and sisters uh, in, in the Netherlands. But the Mennonites, like the Amish, have decided to drop out of American society. Now, by dropping out, what they don't want they don't propose is to unleash a violent revolution uh, against uh, what they can, might conceivably see as a wicked society. They simply opted out, uh, which doesn't pose any dangers to anybody. Just as the orthodox, ultra-orthodox Jews in the, the Mer Shavim area of Jerusalem have opted out of Israeli society. They don't recognize Israel because um, as long as the Messiah has not appeared on this earth, you cannot recognize uh, a Jewish state. Uh, so they've, they've dropped out, like hippies did in the 1960s. They don't uh, serve in the army and so on. Again, uh, to say that these people, uh, uh, do, that there are no problems attached to this would be, go, would be going much too far, because there are problems and there are, they do have a political influence. But in any case, they're not revolutionaries. They're not about to bomb anybody's underground. Um, where it does become a problem is when people do indeed have revolutionary programs to destroy the society around them, whether it's for religious or political re uh, reasons. And these people have always been there. Um, and I, would, uh, I think that it's a serious problem 
well, shouldn't avoid this. Um, 